Whenever you begin a project in SpeedEdit, the first thing you want to do is establish that project by saving it out. Even with nothing in the editor, we've established a new project with its resolution. We're going to go to Save As, and we're going to save this out. We're going to go to the Projects folder in our master folder here, and we're going to go ahead and call this Session 1. You can see at the top of the interface, now we have session one and we know that that's the project that we're working on. And this is helpful in that uh, it's going to create its undo redo stack now inside of the projects folder. Now this folder right here inside of projects that goes along with session one is going to become the undo redo stack for this project. And this can become handy later on if we're in the middle of a project and let's say the lights go out and the power is dropped. Then when we come back, if we didn't save the project, all we need to do is come to the undo redo stack and load up the last file that's available here. And we'll regain everything that we had in that project except the very last mouse click that we did. So it's very difficult to lose any project information in speed edit, even if the power goes out or the machine just stops working, it doesn't matter. Once you can get the machine back up and running, SpeedEdit is going to recover all the way back to one mouse click. SpeedEdit works with a next generation workflow allowing you to see a storyboard and a timeline at the same time. So let's go ahead and decide what clips we want to use to start out with our edit. And again, I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click on the clips in the order that I want to bring them into the edit. And SpeedEdit will remember the order that I'm clicking on the clips and bring them in in that order. And I bring them into the storyboard and the timeline gets populated automatically. So here's our storyboard view up here and our timeline view down here. The first time that you bring a clip into the editor, it's going to have to conform the audio for that clip. And this can take a little bit of time depending upon how long the clip is. And it will be labeled as conforming during this process. Uh, now once the clip has gone through this process, you'll see the waveform actually appear right underneath the clip. And it only has to go through this process once. Then this information becomes part of the cached information along with the thumbnail for the clip and the other information that gets saved in the new tech info file. Just be aware that if you're bringing in very long clips that the conforming process can take a little bit of time. Now, a timeline is a literal view of a project. And in a timeline, you can see all of the clips that are going to play back. You can see the order that they're going to play in. And the amount of time that they take up is represented by their icon as well. Now, a storyboard is a little bit different than that. A storyboard is more of a conceptual view of your project. And you can see the clips, and you can see the order in which they're going to play. But their time reference isn't shown as a big block of time uh, with the icon. It's actually shown right up here, being referenced by these purple and green lines as to uh, what the video is, how much there is, and what's being used. A storyboard is very handy for quickly manipulating clips in an edit. So down here on a timeline, if I wanted to change the position of two clips, I have to worry about how long they are. And right now I have uh, timeline ripple turned off. So if I move a clip down here and then I want to put this clip in its position, it's too big. So now I have to grab these two clips and move them over and then I can take this clip and put it in. And if I want to move around a number of clips, this can become even more difficult. Now, on a storyboard, I can simply take the clip in question and I can drag it to wherever I want it to be in the edit and the timeline is going to update in real time. Now, I can left click and drag out a box and multiply select clips and move them as a group and then move other clips in between the videos that I just moved into place. So again, there's no easier way to manipulate clips uh, within an edit as far as positioning them than doing it on the storyboard. Let's talk a little bit about setting in and out points. I'm going to start down here on the timeline and of course we can set in and out points traditionally on this timeline. We can grab the end of a clip and we can drag it with the left mouse. We can grab the right side of a clip. And we can drag. Now, I have timeline ripple on right now. So if I make any changes, if I grab the out point of a clip here, you'll see that the whole timeline ripples right along with it. I'm going to turn timeline ripple off. And now, if I 
change some of these out points, you see that I can create gaps in the timeline. Now these clips by default are locked together and what I mean by that is if I move the video clip around the audio moves right with it and if you change the out point the audio out point changes right with it. Now it is possible to grab just the audio and change that independently to do a split edit. I can even grab the audio clip and slide it in time or even slide it so that it's completely offset from the video clip. But notice that if I grab the video clip and I move it, the audio is still locked to it. I'm going to go ahead and undo back to the original state. Now I can right click on the clip and say I want to unlock the streams and now they're completely unlocked and separate from each other and I can move the audio and the video as completely separate things. You can always bring them back together and relock them. Now we created these holes up here on the storyboard. I'm going to go ahead and magnify the storyboard using the magnifying glass and you can see the holes that were created in the timeline up here in the storyboard represented by these black spaces. And we can do a couple of things with these black spaces in the storyboard. We can just simply select the first one and hit the delete key. It'll jump to the next one, hit the delete key, and hit the delete key and it's going to remove all of the empty spaces from my timeline. That's quite handy. I'm going to go ahead and control Z, get one of my blank spaces back. I can now use this as a reference area and it knows how much space it is taking up here on the timeline. So if I have a piece of video and I want to try and inherit the piece of video into that space, you can simply grab the piece of video that you want to use and hold down the Alt key and put it over the top of the blank space in the storyboard and you'll see that it says inherit. And when I let go, it's going to perfectly inherit into the time space that the blank space was taking up. Now, you can see right here on the clip that I dropped in that it only used up a certain portion of the audio and video. So again, on the storyboard, the audio and the video is represented by these purple and green lines. The purple line is the video, the green line is the audio. And on these clips, we're using a lot more of the clip because it's a much bigger line. But here, there's a portion of the audio and video in the front and the back not being used. Now we can very easily change the portion of this clip that's playing back by doing slip and slide and moving the in and the out point at the same time. We can do that by holding down Alt and Shift and now we can change the portion of the clip that's going to play but not the duration of the clip because that was set by the blank space that it filled. Now let's talk a little bit more about setting in and out points. We can set in and out points on the storyboard very easily as well. I'm going to blow these clips up so they're actually quite big and we'll start over here on the balloon clip and if you put the cursor on the left hand side of an icon and you hold down the alt key you'll see that it says in and you can now change the in point of the clip by left clicking and dragging. We can also change the out point by putting the cursor on the right side of the clip and holding down the Alt key and now we're changing the out point. So again I can very quickly go through and I can set an in point, I can set an out point, set the in point and set the out point and very quickly get just the portion of the clips playing back that I want to see. You can also set the in and out points on a clip by selecting the clip in question that you want to work with and hitting F8. F8 will open the clip properties panel and from here we can see the in and the out point displayed and you can left click and drag right on the in point, left click and drag right on the out point. You can also left click and drag in the center to choose the icon that's going to represent the clip here in the storyboard. Now we have a lot more controls to the clip here. We have the ability to change the clip speed. We have the ability to turn on and off the clip's overlay, to lock the audio and the video together, and we have the entire control tree of controls. And this controls every attribute of the clip, and most of these controls are uh, keyframable and animatable over time. So we'll take a look at that as we get further into the training. Now you do have the ability to do split edits on the clips up here in the storyboard as well. I'm going to go ahead and expand in on the balloon clip again here and you can see that if I hold down alt and shift at the same time I get slip and slide. 
but if I hold down Alt and Control at the same time, I can now change just the endpoint of the audio of the clip. So I can have the audio start before the video, or I can have the audio start after the video. And if I do a split edit, you'll see that the clip is now represented. Uh, the video is a purple line and the audio is a yellow line for a visual representation that the split edit has occurred. And when you do the split edit, of course, you can see that uh, updated down here in real time on the storyboard. You can see that split edit happening. Again, we'll change it back the other way and you can see it the other way. Now if I go ahead and set those back to where the audio and the video are at the same point, of course, the line turns green again, indicating that no split edit is happening. This, of course, is a completely interactive environment between the storyboard and the timeline. So if I make a change down here in the, in the timeline and I do a split edit where I have the audio start after the video, you can then see that displayed in the storyboard icon as well.